my name is Konstantin Blioch. I work in Japan uh, at the institute called Riken uh, near Tokyo, and this is a sort of Japanese national lab. Uh, this is Peer Research Institute. And I'm working on the various aspects of theoretical optics and quantum mechanics of photons, including angular momentum, spin, and uh, various non-trivial effects in uh, structured light. Angular momentum is uh, something related to rotation. So any rotating objects can produce uh, angular momentum. And in optics, we have two types of angular momentum. The first one is uh, the spin angular momentum, which is produced by local rotation of electric and magnetic field vectors. So a circular polarized slide, it has rotating electric field and magnetic field, and this rotation produces spin of light. And the second type is uh, a bit more tricky to explain because it's related to uh, phase of, of light. And if phase front of this wave forms a sort of uh, spiral structure, then uh, light uh, locally propagates along uh, spiral trajectories. And this spiral trajectory propagation produces orbital angular momentum. So this is locally sort of photons moving along spirals, but this is not so actually because this can happen in free space and actual beam propagates along the straight line. So and uh, angular momentum uh, represents uh, additional degrees of freedom of light in, in addition to something similar to classical mechanics, like uh, for particles we can have trajectory, and uh, so particle has coordinate and momentum, uh, then light can have these intrinsic degrees of freedom in addition to trajectory, which can carry some interesting information and allow some uh, manipulation and information transfer. I think this started from the seminal works by Pointing a century ago, and Pointing was first who who described the momentum density of light called now pointing vector. And he also described the first examples of the angular momentum in circular polarized light. And this is spin of light, how we call them now. And uh, then it was uh, developed for many decades uh, uh, using mostly these degrees of freedom, spin of light, so polarization, until in 1992, there was a really seminal work by uh, Les Allen and uh, uh, other people published about the orbital angular momentum of light. And this is about so-called vortex beams, vortex phases, which produce orbital angular momentum. And this was like a real start of our field uh, in modern times. So since then, the field was growing very rapidly. And we have thousands of papers every year now about optical angular momentum. I know that uh, many researchers are working on, on the increasing the amount of information which can be transferred and used in quantum information transfer uh, using angular momentum degrees of freedom. The simplest optical field we can imagine is like plane wave or Gaussian beam. And if we add some structure to this optical field, we can add more, more interesting properties to these fields. And this is called structured light. So we are working on, on non-trivial properties of structured light and new types of angular momentum in this field, which allow to, for instance, manipulate particles or to couple a spin of light to the direction of propagation light. These are so-called spin orbit interaction. And this is a very promising area because it, uh, it provides a sort of optical analog of spintronics. The idea of spintronics in semiconductor is to use spin degrees of freedom of electrons to, uh, to manipulate cu electrical currents or to uh, provide some information transfer. We, we can do the same with photons. And, but for this, we, can, we need to couple intrinsic spin degrees of freedom to some propagational properties of light. And this field of spin orbit interactions provides for this. To industry and engineering, they talk to, for instance, radio companies for, to have more channels for, 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 for given band of frequencies. If you can have more channels more for information transfer, this is a big deal because the price for frequency is astronomically high. So you can, if you can increase this information, this is really valuable. And uh, of course, optical manipulation, I now uh, deal with both nanoparticle, nano objects, and biological objects. They manipulate biological cells. You can use structured light and properties of light to probe uh, biological tissues and so on. So 
there are many applications of this kind.